Hey guys. Hello. <laughs> so, we all saw Solo. So, that was fun. I actually enjoyed this one, which was surprising. I, I was actually going in thinking that I might not like it, which is sad because, it, you know, I used to like Star Wars movies, and yeah. then they made The Last Jedi, and now I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, now, having gone back and watched it again, because we had a member of the family that had not seen it yet. That's correct. Um, well, later this month, it's going to be on Netflix. Yeah. So we can go back and experience the trauma again. Yay! <laughs> I mean, oh. um, there, there was a little bit of merit in it, but it also really pointed up the what were you thinking stuff, too. So well, I mean, yeah. You know, I'm not I, sure my opinions really changed on it, but I did want to give them a little bit more uh, credit than I had before. Honestly, what I would have done is I would have cut out the entire Canto Bite side quest. Yeah. And I would have spent way more time training Rek. Well, yeah, because she wasn't trained. Because, okay. Name the three things that Ray learned. I have no idea. Exactly. He said, I'm going to teach you three things, and then you're not going to, you know... And, and then you're going to know that the Jedi should be gone. That the, Jedi, that the Jedi should end. Right? Yeah. I think he taught her one thing. And it was like, hold this. And he didn't explain the lesson. And yeah. it's like... The, Yoda was... You know... He wasn't Yoda straightforward. Was big, but... he, he was very much in a... You know, Eastern sort of sensei. Yeah. But... He wasn't straight up, you know, he didn't straight up not explain anything. Yeah. Everything, you know, if you look at Empire, everything that they that they did made sense and it was it was for a purpose. You know? He was either training agility or he was training you know, all you know, all these other things. Even to the point of, you know, lifting the X Wing out of the out of the swamp or going into the cave. They all had a purpose. Right. Ray just kind of was on the island for a bit. Yeah. And honestly, that was fine if that was, you know, the first half hour of the movie. And then there was this inciting incident that, you know, forced him to go, okay, yeah, I'm going to train you. And and then, you know, we're going we're gonna to do this. Yeah. But it, it just seemed to have no purpose or direction. It was just kind of, I'm going to hang out until you train me. Okay, I'll train you. Now you're trained. Go. <laughs> and, you know, but but Solo, I actually, I actually really liked. And they toned down the social justice warrior stuff, yeah. which I, I liked. You know, they, they kind of, in a way, played it for laughs with the, with the, uh, what's her name, robot. Right. Right? Uh, L3 or whatever. Which ended up becoming the brain of the... Uh, of the Millennium Falcon. Well, it, it, it was actually kind of funny because... Um, I, I saw, you know, just something on Twitter... Um, where a, a guy had tweeted at the Star Wars official Twitter... When my daughter and I went to go see Solo... His daughter's like six, right? Um, when when they put L three in the in the ship, she turned to him and said, "C three PO, talk to L 3 Because you know he plugged yeah. in, and there's actually a line in I believe it's four, where he says, "Your your ship speaks with a very strange dialect." It's actually five because they're fixing the Millennium Falcon when they're holed up in that asteroid. Right. Um. But you know, it it was it was nice that they had those, um, had those little callbacks. Right. Um. One of my issues. Well, I have a couple issues with with the film, but they're they're small ones. Like. Uh, 
Corellio, at least in the in the books, which I know aren't canon, but you know that's that's kind of how those things have been crystallized. And if they're going to bring people like Thrawn in, I think taking some influence from the expanded universe is actually you know laudable and, and good. Um, Corellia was supposed to be a, you know a, uh, it had a sea underbelly, but it was it was a, a big metropolitan. Uh, planet a lot like Coruscant, you know, and it was all built around piloting and shipbuilding, and they just kind of turned it into a crap hole. Can you name a planet in the current Star Wars canon that is not a crap hole? Neither can I, because we don't know if Coruscant even exists, because there were five planets that were blown up yeah. in in uh, Force Awakens by Star Killer Base, and we don't know what those were called. We right. just know that that was the Republic, which makes me assume that Coruscant was one of them. So that one, which you know had a CD underbelly, but you know it's it's a it's a dirty it sort was, of universe. Everything has a yeah, CD underbelly. But it was the red light district in a major city. It exactly. Wasn't, it wasn't you know dystopian. You know the entire planet. Excuse me. The entire planet is just crap. Yeah. And, uh... And that's definitely the way they played it. So, yeah. Where it was being run by the mob and, you mm-hmm. know, it's... Well, and the Empire. Yeah. Which doesn't help. <laughs> um, but the way they put Corellia out before, it was Corellia was a shipbuilding uh, planet long before there was an Empire. So the Empire didn't control Corellia they uh, were customers of Corellia. Yeah. You know, like they were customers of the cloning planet, I can't remember what. Uh, Camino? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Camino isn't a crap hole, but it is raining all the time, so that's something. Well, it's it's a planet that you can't exist on except in that one little enclave. That's true. It's, you know, it's not the same thing. It's mm-hmm. not a city. Yeah. It's, it's a factory. It's a factory on a planet that's all water. Yeah. Um, so, uh, m- my other, you know, thing is, I, I don't really like how Han and Chewbacca met. You know, I thought the scene was done fine, but story-wise, I, I don't, I don't really understand it. Because... You know, and and this has been established in stuff that is canonical. Kashyyyk was completely ravaged by the Empire when they took over, and they subjugated the Wookiees to, uh, to to be manual labor, to be slaves. Right. So right. most of the Wookiees are enslaved. In the you know in in the in the movies after three. Right. You know, it, after three and before six, of course. So, him being in an active war zone, just him, yeah, as the beast, doesn't really make sense to me. Well, I I think the scene was done well. I think the scene you know had a comedic flavor to it. I think that the scene scene was done well. But I I don't think that it works very... We don't have an explanation of why he would be there. It feels out of place that he would be there. Yeah. And it seemed like they were just, oh, well, we're making it like the Beast in uh, yeah. Jabba's Palace. It, it, it was, it was the Rancor, yeah. and then it ended up being Chewie. Yeah. Well, I, I have to put it this way. Um... As a movie that had nothing to do with Star Wars in any way, or a movie that I went and saw and I knew nothing about Star Wars, I would have enjoyed the movie. I would have thought, oh, this is a cool movie. Okay, it's awesome. But as someone who grew up with Star Wars and knows Star Wars and read uh, not all the books, probably 10 or 15 of the total books, I hated it. Yeah. Because, okay. Again, and this is personal bias. Mm-hmm. 
you know, there's no need to... Well, this is opinion, so it, it, you know, you can say just about whatever. There's, there's no need for anybody to write in and tell me how wrong I am. It's my <laughs> opinion. My opinion, for me, is always going to be right. You have your own opinion, and it's apparently right for you, even though it's wrong. <laughs> but, anyways, my point is this. In the 80s, there were three books, a trilogy, about Han Solo that came out. Uh... Han Solo at Star's End, Han Solo's Revenge, and I can't remember the other one. Um, if you like Star Wars at all, find them and read them. Um, it did come out as, as a single book trilogy, like a trade paperback at some point. Um, it might be possible to find it digitally, um, but if, if you have an opportunity, get the books and read them. It gives a much better backstory to Han, and, and not they don't not, tell you where the where yeah. It's it not an up. origin story. It's not an origin story. They're they're just novels about Han Solo. It's adventures before he met uh, Luke and everybody. Yes, that's when he was a young man. And blah 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 blah. But those stories put forth a very different view, at least in my opinion of who Han Solo was and what his place in the universe was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's still a smuggler, but you understand a little bit more about uh, why he is the way yeah, he is. Yeah, it was, it, there was just a lot more depth to the character. Because mm -hmm. he's a good guy who is sick of being good guy. That's, that's really what it comes down to. I mm -hmm. think. Because he wants to be out for himself, but he can't really do it because he has a conscience. He he has a heart of gold in spite of his desires. Yeah. He, now, he they, doesn't want to be the good guy. They did play that a little bit in the solo movie. Sure. But, for me, it felt like the whole movie was just... We're just set... This movie is just to set up another movie. Well, yeah. But the, it, the original plan itself. was a trilogy, but yeah. that's probably not going to happen now. The... You know, and... And as a movie, I still think it has merit. I, th I think it was well done in what it is. But the fact that... And this is something that's bothered me about Star Wars the whole time. I just went past where I needed to go get Josh. Uh-oh. Uh, this is something that's bothered me about the Star Wars universe... Well, the Star Wars movies, excuse me, uh, since they were bought by Disney, is how they're throwing away the universe. Yeah. Um... You know, they went and said, okay, we're scrapping all the books, we're scrapping all the history, we want to do it ourselves. And then with uh, The Last Jedi, they truly made it The Last Jedi. There ain't nothing left now. Yeah. They killed everything. There, there's no Republic, there's no Empire, there's no Resistance, there's no the First Order, there's no Jedi, there's no Sith, there's no uh, old cast, really. Yeah. There's... <laughs> and honestly, there isn't a new cast yet. No. <laughs> there's... There's there are uh, people who do things, and we don't really care yeah, about them. Yeah, there's yet. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farms, who seems to be Superman or Superwoman, I guess, because she is not a man. And you know, I don't really have anything against her, but if you make her perfect at everything, then what's her where, character the, is a single where's dimension? The, where's the dramatic tension? And yeah, they turned her into a Mary Sue because they wanted a, a strong female character, and you can have a strong female character that isn't a Mary Sue. Uh, my my go-to for a strong female character is always going to be Ellen Ripley from the Alien movies. Right. Uh, just because she is she is a woman, but she also you know she she fights the she fights these things that you know are are crazy you know. The, the, he, she fights the aliens with their bare fists at some points, you know. Yeah, but it's, she, it's she not does that, amazing things, but it's not you know it, she isn't perfect. She has flaws. Yeah, and see, Ray has no flaws, mm -mm. and there's nothing she can't do because she can and beat she down a a, a a trained Sith with yeah, no knowledge. A, a trained Sith that not only is a trained Sith that was trained under that, but also was trained as a Jedi before that. Yes. Who, you know, since he knows the Jedi, he should be able to whoop on the, the Jedi pretty badly. Yeah. But no, 
this untrained, I didn't know there what lightsabers were, you know, an hour hours ago. ago. Yeah. Now I can best the guy who can just kill people at a whim. Well, the guy who seems to have run a a cadre of of fallen Jedi knights. Yeah. Because who are the knights of Ren? Yeah. We don't know because they don't explain anything. Right. <laughs> They just say, oh, yes, he ran the Knights of Ren. So are they all dead? What happened? Was it a boy band? We don't know. <laughs> that would be hilarious if if Tantra McD... <laughs> if, if whiny Tantra boy had a yeah. boy band, that would be great. And his boy band was the servants because nobody else would play with him. <laughs> and his mic has a cross card. Yeah. <laughs> now, I thought he was a cool character, but he Until ended he up... started throwing fits and... I want to be my grandpa! I want to be my grandpa! I actually thought it was kind of funny. You know, when, when he was you know, beating up on stuff, I'm like, wow, this guy's kind of really deranged. I wanted... And then he just turned into a whiny teenager. And it's well, just like... And see, that's what they've done with Dude. every villain since Disney took over. They're they're not villains. They're just angry people who happen to have some kind of structure behind them. Because uh, General Hugs, which <laughs> I I thought was hysterical, <laughs> because when I saw the movie in the theater, I did not pick up on the fact that Poe was calling them General Hugs or Colonel Hugs or Captain Hugs or something. Yeah, but it was always hugs. It wasn't hugs. It uh-huh. was hugs. Uh huh. And it was just the fact <laughs> that this guy reacts the way he reacts, like he's Elmer Fudd. Yeah. You know, and I'm sorry, Elmer Fudd is not a general of the Empire that is second only to, uh, I can't remember the dude's name. Snoke. Yeah, Snoke. Second only to Snoke. He's so powerful, and he still acts like he's confused by technology. Well, remember Grand Moff Tarkin and how he just oozed professionalism, and yeah. he, he had control the whole situation, and yeah. oh, yes. I, <laughs> you know, and it was, his whole thing was, yeah, I'm in charge here. I'm in charge here because I'm better than everyone else at this stuff. He, he is, seemed like a man in charge. Yeah. Now it seems like they brought the children in and they haven't grown up yet. Yeah, exactly. So so and, it's it's everybody playing pretend on the schoolyard and that's what they're going to zoom out to at the end of episode 9 is Ray's 6. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and Kylo Ren is, is the kid in third grade who... <laughs> you know, it's gonna yeah. be like the Lego movie where they zoom out and this is what regular life is like. <laughs> it's just, it's just so dumb. And then, you know, it's like, oh, this is Star Wars. No, no, it really isn't. But anyways, back to Solo. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there was a lot of stuff in those books that you know I think would have made a much better movie and a much better trilogy. Could, you know, if they'd have done that, but like, you know, Han Solo that stars in would have been a freaking him awesome movie. Well, and you can play it for the comedy because of the ending. Yes, because the ending is great, and it would play for laughs really well. And I'm not going to spoil it, but it it works really, really well because the whole thing is this search for this treasure, and the treasure is not what you expect, and it's really great. Well, that wasn't Star's End. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm that was sorry. the one with Zim the Despot. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I cannot remember the title of that book. Because Revenge is the one where they went to that uh, agricultural planet. No, what? no, no. That was Star's End. Wasn't Revenge the one where he got basically got duped into picking up a, a shipment of slaves? And then he went after the guys who gave him the job? Yeah, I believe so. I can't remember. I need to go back and read the books, people. <laughs> um, because now I'm telling you how awesome the books that I can't remember anything about are. So, everybody who... Uh, everybody who has... has, You know... Who is going to see the movie or cares about spoilers has already seen it. So, 
I'm not going to worry about spoilers. What do you think about Darth Maul showing up? I know that probably felt, out, you know, out of left field for you because you didn't know that Darth Maul yeah, canonically I, survived. I did not know that they had brought him back. We need to tell Josh. He was revived by a bunch of fans. <laughs> I like wish if, that joke was mine. If fans were going to revive somebody, he could have chosen better. He eh, could have chosen better. He's a cool villain, even if it's just that he looks cool. Well, he looks like an old man in pink. He looks like a member of KISS now, okay? <laughs> He's a 70-year-old man who still wears the face paint. That's what he looks like. And it's just, you know, I'm watching this like, hey, the... Oh, that is, isn't it? Mm. Oh, man. And it's got the robot legs. He has the robot legs because he did get cut in half and they just... Well, lightsabers cauterize the wound, so, you know, you could survive yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If someone gets to you quick enough. Technically, they should have had the technology to reconnect it all. Mm. Because we have the technology now to reconnect, you know, fingers and all the other Mm -hmm. stuff. So, you know, if we're talking science fiction, you know, thousands of years in the past. Oh, but but Star Wars has always been more science fantasy than science fiction. Yeah. Where, you know... It doesn't really matter if all the science works, and they don't try to explain it to you. Yeah, which I'm okay with, because yeah. I, I, I'm I not looking for Star Wars to be real, mm-hmm. but I am looking for it to actually have continuity and, and have some integrity to itself. And since Disney bought it and said, oh, we're going to crank them out every six months, <laughs> I, I kind of thought this was going to happen, and it happened, and I don't think they're going to make it into... 2040, like they say. Right. I think if, if they don't switch it up and change things back to making movies for the people who want to see these, they're not going to be making more than two or three more. Mm-hmm. Well, I I think that the box office problems with Solo, you know, Solo underperformed at the box office by a, a large margin. It had one of the worst weekends of a Star Wars movie ever. Well, after Last Jedi, I was not... I I, I was going to go see it because <clears throat> I, I need to see the next movie. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if I had not seen it in a theater, I wouldn't have been crying. Yeah. I would have just been, oh man, I missed it. Well, you know... It, and after Last Jedi and now Solo, they better knock it out of the park on the next one or I'm not even going to bother. Well, and I'm not the only person. J.J. J. Abrams is back to direct on episode 9. So hopefully things will yeah, be better. Yeah, but dir- there's more than direction involved here. Absolutely, there's, absolutely. Because, I mean, you know, here's here's my view of the whole thing, okay? We've got, what's her name? Kathleen running, Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy running it. and Darth I'm, Kennedy. Yeah, Darth Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, I, and when she said, she, you know, I saw the picture of her and, and some of the other women involved in the production... And they're like, the force is female. You know, t-shirts that say the force is female. Okay, well, if this is the result of the force being female, I would su- I would suggest to you that the force is not, the f- not female. The empire is female because they are killing this, this franchise. Mm-hmm. Because what's happening is, yeah, I, I have no problem with a strong female character. I really don't. I don't have a problem with any of the characters they brought in except for Laura Linney's, or not Laura, was it Laura Linney? Uh, Laura Dern. Laura Dern, yes. I, for some reason, got her missing. I don't like Rose either. Well, Rose is Rose. You know, she's she's a side character. And again, I don't really have a problem with her. But my problem is with the fact that these are movies that are being written by people who either don't understand Star Wars. Well, they they don't understand Star Wars, clearly. But they don't have a love for it either. Mm -hmm. And, you know... So they're changing it to fit a particular mold. Yeah. And and here's what I'm going to say. Star Wars is not a women's movie series. It's not a women's franchise. I'm not saying there aren't women who like it. But what I'm saying is, 
That's not the demographic that has been supporting this for the last 40 years. It's it's not the one that made uh, George Lucas a millionaire on merchandising rights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? There are... I, I, I don't think that the there's parity in the numbers of women who have their houses filled with Star Wars memorabilia as there are guys who have their house filled with Star Wars memorabilia. You know, and again, I'm not trying to offend anyone with this, but I'm just saying women are not going to be science fiction fans. Not the vast majority. You know, I have friends who are women who love Star Wars and are into it, and I think that's awesome. I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying there aren't any, but I'm saying that's not that's not your sweet spot. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to change this into a movie that is predominantly for women, you're going to lose the demographic that pays for the tickets. Because if you continue doing what you've done in the last two movies, I'm not going to watch anymore. Well, honestly, the the way that I see it is, you know, Solo was good, and it actually, you know, I I, I thought that, you know, honestly, I I kind of, I kind of, you know, separate it from from Han Solo. I wasn't really expecting it to be, oh, this is this guy, you know, Al yeah. Marinrak is Han Solo. I I kind of, I look at it the same way as you look at fan fiction or fan made films. Yeah, I okay. Where it's like, it's it's someone's version of Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I actually enjoyed that because I, wa- I wasn't expecting what I knew I wasn't going to get. Right. Um, really, for me, Episode 9 is their last chance. If they screw up Episode 9, I probably won't watch another yeah. uh, uh, Star Wars film. And, this, and the definitely really, not in theaters. The really sad part is... They put out seven, and I was like, this is great. I love seven. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait for the next movie. And then I saw Rogue One, which by itself, as just a movie, is fine. But then uh, that movie, as part of the Star Wars uh, universe, I don't think it's good. Well... I, I think it's very different. Well, yeah, and I'm okay with different. And you know, I'm I don't think everybody's got to go. I have to channel a Lucas in order to have this movie. Well, but yeah, yeah. You, I honestly, expect it you, to be different. I I want to see you know different kinds of stuff, yeah. and I think that's what's really kept the MCU going is they have all these different directors and different you know. Mm-hmm. So everybody has a different take on things. Yeah. You know? So. Every franchise, because there are many franchises yep. in the MCU, each franchise has its own flavor. Yeah. You know, I Iron Man is very different yeah. than Captain America. So you're not getting the fatigue that a lot of the more casual people who, you know, I, I was listening to Andrew Clavin talk about this today. He's like, why are there all the superhero movies? They're all the same. It's like, no, they're not all the same. You're not getting the yeah. minutiae. You're not getting, you know, they all have their, they, they're all telling a, a story that arcs over 20 films in 10 years, but they all have their own little flavor. Each well, character brings their own little yeah. flavor into the pot. Each, each movie is adding their little part to the big storyline. And, and I think that's awesome because, you know, Ant-Man, when they said Ant-Man, I was like, oh, crap. Oh, dude, we were laughing so hard. And I cannot wait for Ant-Man and Wasp to come out. Oh, I, yeah. I they did very, very well with it. Um, and then look who's finally here. Hey, Hello. Josh showed up. What do you know? Yes, I did. Hello, so friends. We're recording. Yes, I kind of figured because you guys were talking very animatedly. We're talking about uh, thoughts on Solo right now. Okay. And, okay, so, but here's here's my view of it. We started with Seven, which was an awesome start. And let's remember, strong female character there, okay? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was totally okay with Ren at that point. Oh, definitely. Because she was not, you know, I can do anything, I can do anything better well, than you. Well, it's you know. Ray, but yeah. It's, yeah, it's fine. Ren is the bad guy. <laughs> 
It's still funny to me. It's still funny to me. Yeah. Nobody knows why, but it's still funny to me. So, Ray. Sorry, Ray. I yes. meant Ray. Um, I'm, I'm completely okay with that. Of course, if you think about it, you know, Ren is also a strong female character. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Um, um, but the strong start was seven. Mm-hmm. Rogue One, eh. Last Jedi, crap. Solo, eh. I, I, I am not waiting with anticipation the next movie. When the next movie comes out, it's going to be a, well, I guess I got to go see this one. Yeah. And I, I, I do not think that they're going to pull it out. I really don't. I think they're going to go, oh, well, it didn't work the last three times. We need to do it even more. Yeah. Then it'll work. Well, if you look at the trend on you know how, how things have been going recently... Um, you know the well, just to to say the political left, in you know they lost in 2016, and what they've done is they've doubled down on all the things that made everybody dislike them. Yeah, <laughs> you know they said let's do that more, let's advocate for straight up socialism more, let's do all those things more. Yeah. You know let let's. Bring out Bernie Sanders' desiccated corpse out again to talk about socialism. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, let's let's stay on top. Yeah, we're gonna stay um, on top. You know, it's just it's just not done right, and I I have lost my zeal for this franchise. You know, and I was okay with one, two, and three. You know, I like four, five, and six better. Oh, yeah. But I'm okay with one, two, and three. If somebody says, oh, let's watch The Phantom Menace, I'm not going to, you know, stand up and walk out of the house. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll watch it. Um, but I, I just don't, I don't have the zeal for, I'm, I'm not excited for the next one. Let's just mm-hmm. put it that way. 